And in 2007, Vicky Shanks's husband, Paul, took his own life, leaving her and her seven children in financial and emotional ruin. But Vicky had to find the strength to carry on for the sake of her children. Their story and how they coped in the years since his death is the subject of a new Netflix documentary, Kingdom of Us. Today, we're joined by Mum Vicky and one of her lovely daughters, Casey. But before we chat to them, let's take a little look at a clip from the Kingdom of Us. We genuinely have the best family in the world. I feel like my dad, he wasn't real. I've just heard stories and I've made memories, but I wasn't actually there. I think we're all so used to saying, like, for six years we're OK. But there are some days when I'm like, it's not OK. I'm not fine about what happened. We've all got such different memories. I've constantly gone through the what-ifs that day. There was a banging at the door. I remember the helicopter flying. It's the police. What can we know that day our dad killed himself? It's the most powerful thing I've watched for a very, very long time. And thank you very much to you both for coming to talk about it today with us. Um, I mean, Vicky, I can only imagine what it must have been like to film this. It was shot over a period of a couple of years, wasn't it? Four years. Um, why, tell us a little bit about what it is exactly and why you felt the need to let all of us into your lives. Well, first of all, it was an evolution. It wasn't a decision. So I think you always imagine that you sit down and there's Netflix saying, right, we'll drop a film crew in and we'll make this film. It doesn't happen like that. Mm. So it was very much sort of someone came across us and decided our story should be told. And it evolved from there. But we, we wanted to do it because we felt that subjects like suicide and mental health issues and autism don't get covered in the right way. They don't yeah. get covered in that very open, brutally honest way. And that's what needs to happen. Mm. And all the while we keep glossing over it with different terminologies. It's not ever going to come to the fore and be, and be done the way it should. And we said right from the start, right, we will do this and we want to do this, but it has to be absolutely raw and it has to be absolutely honest and, you know, no staging, no, right, you walk through that door there. Yeah. It had to be yeah. real, yeah. Yeah, so when did you first notice that your husband, Paul, had some problems? It was soon after I met him, actually, but I made excuses for him mm. constantly, the whole time. I, you know, what well, was it he's about not very his well. behaviour that made you think that all was not right? It was very extreme. So yeah. one minute we'd be as high as a kite, laughing and joking, yeah. and the next minute he'd be throwing a bed across the bedroom because Do I called him the wrong thing. Do you think he had bipolar? Oh, he was definitely bipolar, yeah, yeah, there's no doubt and about that, and very OCD. autism as well. I think he probably was yeah. autistic, yeah. And I think, actually, the OCD and the bipolar was masking the autism. Yeah. Funnily enough, it was the other way around, because very often it's the autism is masking. Vicky and Casey, mm -hmm. I watched the documentary last night, and first of all, can I say how brave you both are you know, and your whole family, I think you deserve a medal. Oh, because God. as a woman, <laughs> you have kept... You have kept your family through this most tragic time together. Honestly, Vicky, I, I feel like I know you. I, oh, I wish you. I could be a little bit like you. You've got an extraordinary family, and the love of your family really comes through. Um, so, well done, and congratulations. But because isn't I, that what you do? You do. Isn't that but what you know you when you see it? But you do it so calm You're so calm. You're I'm always always so calm. <laughs> Casey, one thing that really struck me, and again, you are an amazing, amazing young lady. Thank you. You were 13 when uh, your dad took his life, and you're 26 now. 23. Sorry, 23, <laughs> sorry, putting age on you. 23 now. What, th what came across to me was that you were watching videos that you'd never seen before yeah. of your father on the documentary. How did that change your perception of him? Did it change your... Did, could you see that he was unwell when you watched the videotapes again? Yeah, I could. I, but, I mean, I, I could see it when I was a child before that anyway. I knew there was something wrong with him, but then when we watched the home footage, you could... I mean, there are clips of him sort of telling us to put the camera down and stop filming and, like treating us in a really bizarre way and that sort of changed the way we looked at it because we could actually watch him behaving strangely as opposed to actually living with him behaving strangely you know it's different to watch it because than sometimes it, it makes you sit down and rant at you for four hours i saw in the documentary oh, as well oh, yeah yeah but we keep you went outside night. the home to school mm -hmm. when you were at school and then you went back into your world yeah 
did you tell the people at school? Or do, was it something, not like a secret, but you know what I'm saying? That it was like your club in the family, your world that nobody yeah, really we were, knew about. Yeah, uh, we were really isolated at home. Like, we didn't really go out very much yeah. as children because he kind of kept us inside. Yeah. But generally speaking, it did, nothing seemed bizarre because... I read it was just normal. The way he was was normal because we were kids. And if yeah, he said we were going to spend hours organising crayons, then that's what we were going to do. But you also found his diaries, and there was something yeah. quite shocking in the diaries, wasn't there? Yeah, it was a notepad that we found. Yeah. Um, uh, funnily enough, it, Jamie found it, Casey found it, and I found it all individually. Yeah. Um, and we all thought we'd dreamt it, so none of us ever said anything to each other about it until about 18 months later, and I thought I was going mad. Yeah. I thought I'd Can dreamt it Can you tell us what it said in the time? Yeah, it was detailed, um, a detailed plan of how he was going to lock all the children in their bedrooms and then bring them down and kill them one by one in front of me um, as a punishment to me. I mean, his, his mental health by that point was... Has did, well, I don't but know Vicky, where he was. how can you imagine... But... That you dreamt that when you actually had it in your hands. Because when you go through something... Yeah. The day of his suicide was incredibly traumatic mm -hmm. um, and very, very dramatic. Yeah. And I think the three of us thought that the trauma of the day had created this weird yeah. entity in our heads that we wasn't only found real. Like a, like a couple of days after he'd actually... Yeah. So it was a couple of days after, life. and then we hadn't said anything to each other. And then one day, I was going mad. I thought, I'm definitely going bonkers. And I said, Jamie, look, I feel as I found this pad with this information in it. Do you know anything about it? And she was absolutely mortified and shocked to the core because she said, you've just verified that something is true that I always thought was something I'd made up. Yeah. And then Casey you appeared from nowhere it. and said, I saw it too, and I read it too. And then the three of us were just... Oh my goodness! You know, um, we've how have you moved on now? Mm. I, I mean, obviously, something like that. You're, oh, you're. Yeah. It's like a moment frozen in time. But here you yeah. are, both smiling, and I know it's only on the outside. But how have you moved forward, and what are your plans for the future? Oh, lots. But I have, I have a saying that I live by, and I really do try to live by, and I've tried to bring the children up by, and it's that scars remind us where we've been. They don't have to dictate where we're going. And I think making the film was very cathartic because it was a way of owning our story and doing something with it that potentially would help other yeah. people and bring things to the fore and bring things out into the open and I suppose even if people just start talking about these things yeah. more then it would have been yeah. a yeah. triumph if it helps anyone then even better. One mm. of the things that was really poignant and I really got this was uh, you, you're very strong you don't cry very much in the documentary at all but you do have one moment of breakdown and you said I feel really guilty that I couldn't protect you yeah. and you said that to your yeah. children tell me that guilt's gone now are you in a better place in terms of that? No. No, no. You've done a wonderful job with them children, yeah. honestly. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yes, you have. <laughs> so calm with all the cool <laughs> man mad of Andrew, honestly. You really have. You're yeah. amazing. So, and the uh, beautiful family. Exactly. And, and Casey, and talking about moving forward, and, and I know that your, your dad loved music and he was a musician, that's, and there's a big part of the documentary about that, but a lot of your, your sisters have moved on into that kind of a world. Yeah, all you of always them. wanted to do fashion design. Yeah. Yes. yes. Wanted to be the new Vivian Westwood. Yes. And you are... You are starting that, that journey for yourself now as well. Yeah, so I am. Yeah. How do you feel at this point moving forward with life? Is it possible to, to move on, particularly after the documentary, I think, as you mm. say, the cathartic thing's being done now. Yeah. Is it about the new chapter? Yeah, I feel yeah. good now. I feel like the, making the film was like the therapy we all mm. needed yeah. to yeah. So, yeah, sort of get over it because yeah. now instead of it just being our problem that we've kind of all been trying to move past we've sort of shared it with people and now they can sort of get something from it and I hope it gives people sort of some comfort themselves mm -hmm. I hope it's something people can relate to and can feel sad about but mm -hmm. in their own way and now we can all go through it together yeah, yeah. absolutely I think it's quite it's nice just, yeah. <laughs> well uh, Kingdom of Us, Netflix, it's on this Friday. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, as I say, the most incredible watch. Yeah. I can't recommend it enough. Thank you very much, Vicky oh, and Casey. Thank You're you. wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, <laughs> lots more still to come today. We'll see you after this.